Welcome to a new episode of Backlog Weekend, the show where we start the weekend by looking at my backlog, taking one kit from that pile and completing it start to finish. Now in the previous episode, it's the first time that we featured my commission's backlog as opposed to my personal backlog and we were defeated by this piece of terrain and this weekend I will show you how I completed this terrain and made it mine. And where we last left off, we were just in the middle of the base coats. You see here how I started finishing the base coats of this model. So normally when I base coat something like this with my brush, I normally keep my brush heavily loaded with a little bit thicker than the usual paint, still watered down. And the reason for this is there are a lot of details and nooks and crannies that I want to get covered in one stroke of the brush. So your paint flows very well. In one stroke of the brush, all the paint will flow into the nooks and crannies in one stroke, making your painting a bit faster. Now when you're working with a model like this, don't be afraid to pick it off off the table and work away from your table if need be. As I said in my previous episode, my table is incredibly small, so you'll see in this footage here, I'm actually picking it up off the table and working with it until I'm lifting it with my hand away from the table so I can just turn it around much easier without it bumping the sides of the table or the bottom sides of the table. Also at this point, still base coating, make mistakes. It's terrain, we want to make it look weathered, we want to make it look gunked up, so whenever you hit some parts with metallic or you hit some base coat parts in the metallic bits, it just shows like there's a little wear and tear all over the place. It's a great exercise if you're used to painting very neatly. It's nice to relax and work on something like this and paint it haphazardly in the way I just did. Also the paint scheme, if you're curious, is in the caption below. It's a bit updated from the last episode, so you might want to take a look at it if you want to copy what I did over here. So the reason why I picked up the miniature off the table and even tried to make my base coating a little bit more quicker and haphazard is because if it's a speed build or a speed paint or a project like this, you want to optimize comfort over everything else. While we have the luxury of time of two days, what really makes this project or this attempt successful is the fact that you can paint and build for longer hours at a time. You do take up a lot of time resting and taking breaks in between. So the longer you can build your endurance, the better. And that means prioritizing comfort over everything else. So if a position feels weird, if your hand feels awkward, if your back hurts, do something about it. Fix your chair, fix your posture, fix the way you hold the model so that your paint sessions or your build sessions are way longer and more comfortable. And when you get in the zone, you stay in the zone for much longer. When we were painting the buttresses, I actually don't know if this is, these are called buttresses, but these bits over here, you can see that I'm actually painting them over haphazardly, where I'm painting the metallic bits over the concrete bits. And this is because I figured that it would be easier to clean up and paint the concrete bits after because this part seems to be dominated by metallic bits. So base coating the whole thing metallic and then cleaning up later with the base coat or the black base coat might be a little bit easier as opposed to tediously painting all around and avoiding touching the concrete. So sometimes being messy can save you time because eventually in a part like this, no matter how neat you want to be, you're still going to be slow and you're still eventually going to have to do some cleanup after. So might as well just go all out and manic about it. When I was going to do to clean up this part, the buttresses, I was back to using my original black paint and I also took the time to paint black on the broken glass or broken lamps that I knew were not going to be illuminated. So I just wanted to darken that down to show you dark glass or turned off lights. Now before we head on to the super wash, I did what I call some base weathering. So normally you would see people talk about weathering your model after the paint job. I, I normally start my weathering in between because I like to show that there are different layers of weathering as time went by. So during the base coat stage, I already add some initial brown weathering to simulate some dust and some rust so that that's the first layer of decay. Then when we put the wash on, we'll put a second layer of weathering to make it look like there's 
newer rusts or newer pieces of dust that are falling on. Th those layers just add a bit more drama and a bit more intrigue when we're applying our weathering. And weathering here is a bit simple really, it's just really a sponge and some brown paint. And then the moment I was so excited for when I was shooting the first part of this episode, I really wanted to show you guys what was in this wash. These are all the washes and recycled and unused paint on my dry palette and my wet palette. Whenever I have some left over, I put them in this jar. And this is all just mixed up with some agitators. And I save this wash for big projects like this when I don't want to use my expensive GW or even Vallejo washes. Because mixing up all these paints will be really just like a dark brown or green and, or black even. And it's a nice way to have some randomness and even unique shape to it. And I use the big, big, big brush to just slop it on there to save some time. It is a big model, so I made sure that we flipped the model and we painted the underside first. Because that would be a lot easier to do to get all the hard parts. Then put it on the ground or put it on the table and wash it as it was standing on the ground. And that makes it a lot easier. It's like we're washing inside throughout to avoid our hands touching the parts of the models that may be wet with the wash we have applied. And a little tip I guess when you're doing terrain like this, you're washing terrain like this, is wash really slides or flows down. So always start from the top, let it flow down and then touch your way to the bottom. That way you're not using up as much wash as you would intend to and you're also not overloading the details. So as you can see, it's a nice dark greenish brownish dirt that's really tinting the black of this miniature or this model where it's giving it a little bit more character. It could be some faded green, faded brown, it could be a brighter color before that was just weathered with age. Now when we're looking at the dry brushing stage, I wanted to dry brush the metallic bits first with just the silver and then hit the dry brush for the concrete. Because when we're dry brushing, it's inevitable that we might hit areas we don't want. So for example, if I had dry brushed the concrete first, then I'm dry brushing the metal bits, some parts of the silver may get the concrete and it might not make any sense. But if we start dry brushing the metallic bits, I can then dry brush the concrete and use the concrete dry brush to cover up any of the metallics that went on the concrete. And even if some of the dry brush meant for the concrete hits the metallic bits, it simulates dust on the metals. So I finished it off with some effects. You can see here I did some blood effects. I also did some light or glow effects. And if you want to figure out how I did that, I feature that in a similar video of another backlog weekend, which I did succeed. And as always with effects like blood for the blood god, it's always tempting to go a bit overboard or always tempting to just put blood splatter everywhere. But again, lots of people say this, less is more. The less effects you have on it makes the blood stand out more. And I actually feel like I actually put more than I needed to in this model. So I finished up with some weathering and then some varnishing because this is a game piece. This set of terrain is one out of three kits I'm building for a board of an oncoming tournament of a client and the client also commissioned another commission painter to do another set of terrain. I'll link his socials below but his terrain also had some blood effects so I was inspired to keep it all in the theme and also add some blood in mine just so that if ever players mix and match our terrain they would still look good together. So that's it for today, guys. It's a very short but redemptive Backlog Weekend episode. In the next episode of Backlog Weekend, I am thinking about tackling this guy if I don't think about doing a Hobby Mo Pro episode. This show is designed to tell people that backlogs are okay. I am not intending to obliterate my backlog with the show. The normalcy of having a backlog in the hobby is a great thing to have a selection of kits to choose from for the mood we are in and at the same time to practice finishing what we start. So get out there, look at your backlog, take a couple of days, commit to finishing that backlog or that kit and rinse and repeat. It's totally doable guys. If it took me two weekends to do this, I'm sure it'll take you guys much, much shorter. This has been Louis of Louis Loves Minis reminding you to hobby every day to keep the sprues away.